Hello, Mr. Azal. How are you? Very well. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. I'm very well. Uh, my first question to you is about, you know, um, very strange behaviors going on in encyclopedias, specifically, you know, open sources like Wikipedia. Mm. As you know, you know, conventional encyclopedias employ editors who are recognized, you know, leaders in their respective fields. The editors, in turn, identify and hire, you know, world-renowned experts in various domains, right? Yeah. To write the topic in entries, you know, those yeah. entries are then reviewed for accuracy and biased by still other world experts in those fields. Mm -hmm. They have to buy into the treatment of the subject, and the others sign their work with their academic credentials so that any reader can see who was responsible for the article and what their qualifications are, right? Mm -hmm. yep. The system is not foolproof. Not At least it's not sources of inaccuracy it, it's not emerge in it, articles. So my question is, is Mr. Azel, and it's, uh, you know, any expert, for instance, on the history of Bobbism and, uh, you know, Bobby Azali, mm -hmm. new ideas and a scholarship that challenged the well-established stories may take some time to become accepted by the entrenched experts to have reason to a sufficient, you know, prominence in their field to be considered, and so encyclopedia others, a drive to maintain the status quo, yes. you know? So what happened, what happened to the entry specified to Sophazal and Bob? Huh. Because these two, yeah. you know, that's, that's that strength. That, well, that's quite a story. First of all, let's let's address the issue of Wikipedia itself. There, um, a gentleman actually quite early on, in two thousand and five, a, a scholar, an academic actually, um, wrote a essay that is actually available online. I've actually uploaded this thing in multiple places uh, in the past. It's called Wikipedia: The Techno Cult of Ignorance, and it is the most definitive indictment of the whole Wikipedia project that um, that was penned at the very inception of this project within like the first six months to, to one year after this, this uh, Wikipedia first went on air online. Um, and the argument he makes that this whole culture of verifiability and the attempt to democratize um, information in the way that Wikipedia was presenting at was, was not only open to abuse, um, but was a figment of you know the, the of postmodernism gone completely insane, and this is what what has happened with Wikipedia in recent years. They're they're trying to uh, there's more uh, quality control than it was at at least for the first ten years of the existence of Wikipedia. But um, one of the reasons why Wikipedia is categorically uh, prohibited in most major uh, tertiary institutions and universities in the West is because of its unreliability. Um, nothing that you can find on, on Wikipedia is a uh, final word on any subject. Now, on the question of the entry on Sopa Azal and the Bayan, um, I was the initiator of the article on the Bayan, um, and somebody else was the initiator the, uh, of the article on Sopa Azal. It didn't take a couple of weeks. Before, uh, sorry, Mr. Let me, let me, let me, I, I, hold I, I, on. So let me, let me, let me, I can't. Uh, let me finish the just story. Just very, very briefly, yeah. very briefly. I'm, I myself can't put too fine a point on this entry. No, Please do go let, on. Me, let me, let me, let me finish. With, within less than two weeks after the, these um, entries first went up, um, the contingency of the Baha'i Internet Agency responsible for these entries, okay, proceeded uh, through the system that they are have rigged very successfully on Wikipedia to basically take over both of those entries, okay? Um, I left the entry uh, to three other people, and I then subsequently found out that all three of those individuals were subsequently banned from Wikipedia because they went into a, an edit uh, war with, with these members of the Baha'i Internet Agency, okay? That's right. That's and right. then when I came back on, under a, a new ID, because I, I'd forgotten the, the old ID, um, when I went back, 
Um, I got into an edit war myself with, with uh, two of these people. One of them uh, goes under the alias of Cunado, and the other one was this uh, Mark Russell guy. And the, you know, they had an interest to prevent any kind of credible information and credible sourcing and critical information and cr critical uh, information in these two entries from going up. Number one, they made a big brouhaha over the, over the name Bayani. They refused to allow uh, this article to be called Bayani, right? And there is no such a thing uh, up to this very moment, right? And the, no, they changed, they, they changed that article from Bayani, the religion of Bayan, to Azalibabism. And then subsequently, then they merged it with another art article years ago. Um, but the article on Sopa Azal, even though there was multiple Persian language um, and also some European language sourcing, they wouldn't allow it. And, um, they, it, and these were Baha'is, you understand. So they were then pushing only Baha'i sourcing um, in, into these articles and refused. They were playing this, this, this very, um, very dishonest game that the Baha'i Internet Agency on Wikipedia is well known for where you know they were basically eliminating any source that was not a Baha'i source and using the argument of verifiability and a, and a very weird rule that, that, that Wikipedia had at the time. I think that rule may have changed now, but at the time they had a rule that for every language article you have to use the sourcing from that particular language. So if you have an English language article that the, the content of the article, the sourcing of the article must be in, in from English language sources, um, and, and so on and so forth. Now I think they have slightly changed that rule because they realize it's just, it doesn't work. Um, but at that time, most of the so-called verifiable sources were these sources that the Baha'is themselves were putting online. So they were using the argument of verifiability, okay, in a very dishonest way to exclude, number one, the, the site Bionic.com, all of the sources on it. Um, they were... You know, some of these items by E.G. Brown, now they've subsequently go up, but at the time they wouldn't allow this. And they were basically saturating these articles with Baha'i sourcing. So, and this is a way of basically strong, um, strong arming your ideological enemy uh, with your own narrative. And they have done this everywhere. They have done this in multiple contexts uh, of Baha'i or Bobby related uh, articles and entries all throughout Wikipedia. And even right now, um, if you tr attempt to even introduce slight changes um, to any of these articles, these people will come and get into edit wars with you and then have you banned. And some of them have, have you know, gone through the ranks, the editing ranks of Wikipedia and are actual full administrators. Um, and they won't even, you know, they won't even allow you, uh, you know, the possibility of even disputing these articles through one or two edit wars. They will just get you banned immediately. Um, and this is mm -hmm. this is ideologically driven. Now, um, back in the closing part of the last decade, there were several um, exposés that came out revealing um, that the major contribution going to Wikipedia in many articles are by organizations who have an interest um, in the subject at hand. And this was, you know, major corporations, etc. So. You know, the way that, that Wikipedia was set up, despite the claim that its founder has made, and what this article, this very long art article, Wikipedia Techno Cult of Ignorance, demonstrates, um, is that, you know, through the, through the, the argument of, of democratizing information, they're actually allowing uh, the arbitrary, um, they're allowing the arbitrary uh, control and manipulation of information to the, in the interests of, of, of big parties, people with resources, organizations with manpower and lots of people. And you see this particularly in these Baha'i-oriented articles because there's always the same pool of editors. And it's been the same pool of editors since 2005. You know, like this Kunado guy I mentioned, um, this guy has been one of the editors on these Baha'i-related topics since the very beginning. He's gotten into multiple edit wars with me under multiple accounts many, many times. Um, at, as did that Mark Russell, etc. And it is this is a this is a means for the Baha'is to control information, um, and it is a form of censorship on on the one hand. Um, but above all of that, it's it's a it's a manner it's a mechanism of falsifying information. 
And the Baha'is have been masters of that for a very long time in falsifying information. Right. Mr. Azam, uh, you know, uh, back then, uh, how did you find Wikipedia in the first place? Uh, you think Wikipedia is to be able, you know, uh, as a sort of de, de facto, you know, and default source of information about technical topics such as, you know, uh, aneurysm, you know, mm -hmm. and non-technical ones as well. We yeah. should all be able to have confidence in its articles origins, right? Sure. Well, eventually, there, you, you know, know if, if we're naive, it, yes, sure, yes. Yeah. Someone, someone knowledgeable may come along to correct, for instance, a high school dropouts in its per advice. But when? And how can you know that it's been done and it's been due? You know, it might be just before or just after you consult the article. Also, without overseas or curators, you know, the entries have little consistency. Details that have grabbed the attention of a single individual can, you know, loom large yeah. in an entry. What important things can get much less treatment look, if no one has the knowledge or interest to fill look, out those sections. Well, because the internet look, the advance, you know, with the, the Wikipedia policies. Well, because look, you know, whatever these people say, whatever they claimed at the very beginning, we have come to realize that the internet, cyberspace and especially the search engines, um, and these big portals such as Wikipedia are really um, a corporatized endeavor, a corporatized in enterprise. And so these endeavors and enterprises are part of the larger project of neoliberal capitalism. And anyone who honestly believes or was naive enough, including myself back in 2005 at the beginning, that um, these places, these portals are going to offer a true and genuine democratization of information is deluding themselves. It doesn't work like that. Um, it's about information control, and it's about interests, big interests, and agendas pushing their narratives or, or, or keeping territorial watch over their narrative, etc., and trying to drive their competitors out of the market. This is the logic that drives Wikipedia. And with the Baha'is, this is, has always been the case in, in, multiple, uh, in, in multiple contexts, but with Wikipedia, it's glaring, and it has been documented, and I've documented it, um, that the level at which these people will deceive and um, basically rig the system uh, and use it against their, their, their political and ideological adversaries, whether these be Bayanis or some of these Orthodox Baha'i groups, or schismatic Baha'i groups, etc. They've done this and they will continue to do this for as long as it takes. Because, look, you know, you know people who, who think that unless the level playing field is genuinely... Uh, made straight. If there is a, unless there is a genuine demo democratic system of information control in place with, with genuine checks and balances, not these bogus checks and balances that Wikipedia put in, where it can e be easily manipulated. But unless we have that throughout the internet, um, we are dealing with uh, something even worse than systems of, of, of totalitarian control uh, that we've known in the past, such as the, the system in, in uh, during the time of Stalin or Nazi Germany, you know, etc. Um, and uh, this, but this Mr. Is, sorry, hold on, I, I I took it up with uh, you know one of the editors of uh, the articles concerning the Baha'is and the Babis, and uh, you know someone by the name of Susan Manning, you know uh -huh. her uh, as well. Un unfortunately, you know, yeah, I know she her. Told, yeah. By far and large, technical articles can be difficult to understand. Even in peer-reviewed journals, the information sources aren't always clearly on display. And she she added that you know it's going to be very difficult to understand without specific training, and there are controversies in many specific fields that require experience to understand and resolve. Mm -hmm. And experts, as she says knows how to weigh different sources of information sure. and will resolve such apparent contradictions. So are she, is, she, is she suggesting that the articles on the Bob or the Baha'i-oriented articles are being managed by experts? 
Because I, I know yes. for a fact that that is not the case. Unless... You know, she said some of the most relentless contributors to Wikipedia, you know, revisions appear to be people who have simply read, a co you know, a country account in a textbook or worked out something, you know... Uh, but that's not that's that that is not in, what current experts believe. That's you know? not that's not that, that's not how these articles on Wikipedia, such as for example the Bob, um, have been um, dealt with by the Baha'i Internet Agency from their inception. What these articles are showing is a party line. They're showing the the orthodox narrative that the Baha'is have pushed, and particularly the narrative of Nabil Zarandi. There is very little. Other than now, maybe a little bit here and there from, from the works of, of Amonad and, and um, maybe Dennis McEwen, but more critical pieces, you know, issues that the Bayanis have raised, um, these are not dealt with. There is no even hand in this in this area at all. I, I mean, and I defy Susan Menek to show me the, the even hand in any of these articles on Wikipedia. And see, the, the thing is, when you are when you are taking when you are taking Nabil Zarandi as a as the final as a piece of historiography when it is a piece of hagiography um, then all of the problems revolve around this that you know you're basically pushing fictional party line a fictional uh, narrative of Bobism as the truth and then using this to 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 generate entries on places like Wikipedia and elsewhere um, and you know so if she wants to talk about an even hand, um, I would suggest that this article on on the Bob, uh, some of these articles on on Bobism, have sources such as Noctat al Kap, have sources such as Zavari, have sources even you know the the some of these Glajar Chronicle sources that are hostile, and even have uh, even sources such as Hajma Mat Karim Khani Kermani was quite hostile to the Bob, but yet this is history. You understand. Um, you know, but they, they just dodged. They just dodged your objection, yes. saying that well, you know what? What many novices don't know is that it takes um, five years or so, or That's even not more. A, look, you don't to, no, 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 no. to take. Let, let me tell higher. you something. I have, I have. You know, Susan Menek, in my opinion, is not a scholar. She may have a PhD from the University of Arizona, but this woman is a partisan. Uh, apparatchik of the system, close-minded, and what Juan called one, once the, labeled as a glazite cultist. That's what Susan Menek is. And she hasn't produced anything of value. I've read her PhD dissertation. I have a copy of it. And, you know, her, her scholarly work is very substandard, always has been. Um, and she has pushed the party line from as long as I remember. Um, you know, these people are, it's about damage control. And, and the fact of the matter is that on places like Wikipedia and these, you know, various uh, other online encyclopedia portals, um, the Baha'is have relentlessly been pushing a, their own party line. This is, none of this is history. It's not historiography. It is hagiography. Let's call it what it is. They can, they can spin it however they like, you know, and th th this kind of tactic was noticed by none other than than E.G. Brown way back in the 1890s about the buys. You understand? So, uh, do you agree? Do you agree? Uh, you know, with Lawrence Sanger's co. You know, uh, he's the co-founder. I mean, one of the co-founders of Encyclopedia, as you know. Mm. He said, "Quote: Wikipedia articles can end up being degraded in equality by the majority of people." whose knowledge of the subject is based on paragraphs in books and mere mentions in college classes, unquote. Does I think, it just, I, I think does he's it just, I think he's right on one degree, but when but when you have interested parties, and this is the, the reality about of, of Wikipedia today. You know, what, sorry, he's he's specifically talking about the article that may have started out very accurate, you know, in the beginning, mm -hmm. but can be hacked into accuracy by hordes of non-experts, many of whom are, you know, inclined or, to believe fervently that they are even, or even, members or feelings out to hold or even worse, as or, much weight as a scientific paper. Or even worse, it can it can be hacked for the purpose of of, of the demagoguery of, of specific agendas and, and interests, organizations. 
which is what Wikipedia has descended to a long time ago. Um, you know, I, I, I used to joke about this, that Wikipedia actually went through Aristotle's cycles of polities, you know. It went from democracy to, you know, to, to, to tyranny, to oligarchy, you know, and, and back again. But it, it's not a democratic project. If it began that way at the very start, at the very base, um, it very swiftly, and I would say within a matter of, of even six months, if not less, descended into something completely different than that. You know, it, it, it became a, um, and what, what, what uh, the, the, art, the author of um, Wikipedia, A Technocult of Ignorance, said, um, that this is what it is. It's a technocult of, it's a new form of fascism over knowledge. And you know, after all these events, Mr. Azal, had it ever occurred to you, uh, you know, to ask yourself that, mm, you know, for instance, uh, why would I, as an expert, bother contributing his valuable, my valuable yeah. time to a project that can be ruined by any random idiot on the net? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the other thing. I mean, you know, most people, most thinking people, people with degrees, um, you don't even have to be a, a, a you know, so, someone in the ivory tower. Um, most of these kind of people after a while say, you know, why am I wasting my time in this when the system is rigged against actual knowledge production? Um, and so they leave. Now, it's very interesting, very telling that Susan Menek is saying that they have experts on these articles. Um, and they are obviously their house experts, quote unquote, um, not real experts. So that you know that that's where she we're said at. No vices. She said no vices. She she emphasized on no vices, you know, uh, whose knowledge whose knowledge on you know specific subject couldn't go you know farther than a textbook or paragraphs you know uh, out of a bunch of you know. And also with, with some of these articles, see, and I th I believe they may have changed the rule. I haven't looked at it for a long time. But when you narrow down your knowledge uh, parameters to a single language, when you know knowledge, especially on subjects such as the, such as Babism or Islam, um, is operating in multiple languages simultaneously, when you only limit it to a single language, you know you are inviting trouble. And when your your definitions of verifiability are quite narrow, as they were at the very beginning, and pretty much for the first decade of the existence of, of, of Wikipedia, you're also inviting trouble. So this whole thing was, was from the very beginning a tool open to manipulation by special interests. And, you know, let me give you an example. There are a lot of the religion-related articles on Wikipedia, um, on subjects as far-ranging from, you know, uh, you know, actual individual interests on individuals to topics such as Sikhism. Um, I haven't looked for a while, but it used to be the case up until about maybe one or two years ago that in every single religion-related article, the Baha'is had put a, a sub-entry. They were putting their stamp on every religious religion-related article throughout Wikipedia, and nobody was challenging them. And if they were being challenged, they would get into these edit wars, and then um, they would find ways to get you know the, the the person complaining about the situation banned outright from 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 the place. Um, and th this is also how they operate their various lists, you know, whether it be on Facebook, the old y Yahoo and Yahoo groups related lists, um, etc. You know, these people fight dirty um, because they don't know how to fight, you know, like, you know, real fighters. They're, they don't fight like men. Um, they fight li like little girls. And um, the, this is the kind of reality that you find online with these people. And it will, nothing will change until... You know, we figured out better management models of running these sorts of portals on the Internet. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the Internet, for all of its pluses, um, has very much degraded, um, especially since the revelations of Edward Snowden in 2013. Um, and we're now beginning to see, to see that all along this has been a tool uh, for social engineering. And on, on multiple levels, by multiple parties, but multiple parties who are powerful and have the capability, the pockets, and the manpower to do so. Um, you know, because, uh, uh, Mr. Azal, uh, you know, in the same vein, I should say that, you know, there was um, 
a very controversial issue as far back as uh, probably 2002, you know, a question uh, that's been unlocked, you know, and um, off the ledge, that Wikipedia, you know, has two clear advantages over conventional encyclopedias. Mm -hmm. One is that it is simple, you know, when there is breaking news, for instance, an outbreak of violence in a troubled country, an earthquake, you know, for instance, or the death of a celebrity, Wikipedia is quick to respond and report on those events within minutes or hours afterwards. Unlike, you know, the printed encyclopedias, which yeah. take so long to compile. A second one is that topics that might not rate inclusion in a printed encyclopedia can exist in an online format where space and printed pages are not limiting factors. You know, there are thousands of words written about, you know, uh, different subjects, far more than it's written about, for instance, uh, President Roosevelt, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in, in, in printed in media. Yeah. So, uh, but, but the question is, this, you know, this fan-based kind of editing is related to fan fiction. Yeah, you know, sure. The recent phenomenon yeah. of fans writing works featuring their favorite, you know, characters, or uh, shall we say, this fan-based fan -based kind of, you know, literature may demonstrate, you know, a human need for community storytelling. And the Baha'i sure. yeah. Baha oh. want to tell their own story, you know. How could they, how could they put up with that? This is a problem. This is obviously a problem. How could, how could Wikipedia you know, how, put up with that? Wikipedia, exactly. How Wikipedia, well, we handle this problem because Wikipedia set up the flawed rules to make that possible in the first place. It's not a matter of them tolerating it or how can they tolerate it. They welcomed precisely this, this this sort of reality. And this article that I keep referencing, Wikipedia: A Techno Cult of Ignorance, um, explains why that is the case. Um, so, but for instance, Mr. Adam, one way to significantly improve Wikipedia could be to hire a panel of editors, you know, to supervise the entries and editing process. These experts, you know, could ensure uniformity, you know, and equality and moderate disputes, you know. Mm, I believe novices could still contribute. That's okay, which is part of, you know, the fun and excitement of Wikipedia. But an expert panel would have the last word. How would you find this? Well, this is, this is how, at least in the optimum level, the peer review system should be working, um, even in any common encyclopedia setup. Um, but let, let me suggest something here. You know, Wikipedia is only a symptom, okay, of a much larger problem that you're also witnessing within academia itself, okay? And that is... Uh, the institutionalization of bias. Um, and, you know, you commented about this yourself in the past, that, that the peer review system as it exists at the moment um, is far from, from, from level-handed and is far from fair. And there's a lot of abuse that happens continually in multiple uh, for the whole peer review system. Um, we can set up management models until we're blue in the face until there is a willingness by the parties involved in the project to do the right thing at all times in this sort of in these sorts of situations it will not make any difference and i would suggest that there's a systemic issue here and the systemic issue I here is that some social scientists are commenting on is that neoliberalism okay that, that the whole ontology of neoliberalism breeds precisely uh, this pervasiveness of and the socialization of bias that we're talking about. Um, to his credit, and, and, and very few credit, um, back during the la early part of the last decade, Hamid Dabashi, in his book on Eino Ghazata Hamidani, actually put his finger on all of this and in the intro, intro in the first couple of chapters, where he was relentlessly attacking uh, the, the systems of knowledge production, bias systems of knowledge production that are coming out of the academy, but he was doing this in the name of deconstruction, and it was kind of building to his argument about Eino Kozatak Amidani himself. 
But he, to his credit, at that point, he actually put his finger on all of this stuff. And um, nothing has changed, I would say, from the early part of last decade. In fact, the situation has gotten worse and it will continue to get worse until there are systemic uh, approaches to this problem, because the problem is systemic, and the problem is also, you know, it is part of the the zeitgeist and the phenomena of the times that we're living in. So, you know, if you structure a new Wikipedia, first of all, I, I don't think Wikipedia can be reformed. Um, but, you know, if you were to suggest, let, let's say just for, for, for argument's sake, if one were to reform Wikipedia, uh, there would have need to be a complete overhaul of, of the system that has been operative since the very inception of this thing. Number one, you do not allow anonymous accounts. You do not allow people to open up multiple accounts uh, or even, you know, singular main accounts under anonymous monikers. This is the first thing that needs to go. You know, people should, people who are, right. edit, people, the, sure, hold on, hold on. Yeah. People who are editing articles, any article, um, should put their name behind their edits. Just like in the academy, at least optimally, when it, when it works. Right. And right. That is that is the that is the basic foundation of it. Then you you put together several different layers, systems of foolproof transparency, in in the manner in which these edits are happening. Okay, um, you should have the ability, like for example, Wikipedia has this rule about good you know good faith, right? So that you you know you automatically do not assume bad faith in any editor. Nevertheless. In the way that the, the Wikipedia system is set up, bad faith is almost the operative modus operandi of that entire place. But yet, when people call it out, okay, they are the ones that are victimized by the system, right? So the the system in Wikipedia is by definition um, rewarding the perpetrator every time. This needs to be changed completely. And one place to ch change it, number one, is to ban an anonymity in the editing of articles, completely ban it. Um, because when you have banned anonymity, then people are held accountable for the kinds of, of, of edit wars uh, and edits that they're doing to these articles, right? Um, the next thing that you do is that you don't allow an edit to happen by a single editor, even if they have been editing for a long time. There needs to be a consensus and the consensus itself needs to have rules. Um, and these rules have to occur by not just the, 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 the narrow parameters of verifiability, but they have to operate on the basis of sourcing, critical sourcing. And it doesn't matter what language it is. In, you know? That's, that's true. Yeah. And you know, another, another Baha'i scholar by the name of Amy Sullivan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she told me there's another big problem, you know, with the entry of uh, the Baha'i faith, content of Baha'i faith in Wikipedia, that it has failed to inspire millions of you know, visitors to contribute their enthusiasm and interest in order to go deeper and deepen their knowledge of Baha'ism, you know. Oh. And um, at the time, she wondered uh, why. She wondered. Uh, she of of course she liaised the problem with the lack of sympathy for the so-called quote unquote faith. You know, similar to situation that arose in uh, shall we say the cycle like 1960s <laughs> for Dr. Larry's you know yeah. uh, entry. But I believe uh, these two are completely distinguishable and irrelevant. How would you say to that? But well, I believe the lack of look, sympathy. Be a, uh, you, you, a, read, yeah, you read, you read um, these Baha'i entry, these Baha'i entries on Wikipedia, right? By and large, most of this stuff reads like propaganda. And you know, in fact, I think some of the Scientology articles have more critical acumen to them than some of the Baha'i articles. And if you have come from a from the Baha'i community at some point, lived in it. And then over time have developed, you know, critical reasoning abilities um, and are educated after a while. And given, you know, the, the, the level at which these Baha'i editors, um, how hostile, what kind of hostility they show 
to any kind of a dissent in their, you know, in the in the way uh, that they maintain and the territoriality of these people. If you should, after a while, people will go away, you know, even if they're Baha'is. They will go away. That's and, right. And they don't want to deal with this because it's the same old, same old. Um, and, you know, this is why I submit that, um, in fact, Wikipedia as a project must be completely discarded altogether. It has not been a good thing. And this is why universities throughout the West and also elsewhere disallow the citation of Wikipedia as a source, you know. Um, and, you know, I think this is the way it ought to be because this source, by its nature, is misinformation. And it breeds misinformation. But, but, uh, she, she, she was telling that it is difficult, you know, to challenge the grassroots ethos that has grown now. But, there is, but there is no. But there, what, I, what I'm saying is that this is, this is a smokescreen. There is no grassroots ethos to Wikipedia. W Wikipedia is very much an oligarchy. And it's very much niche-driven. And it's very much... All the territorial, ter territoriality that people complain about the ivory tower exists and in a far more cutthroat kind of way um, than you find in the academy. Uh, Wikipedia is operating by the very same principles as, the, as, the, uh, as market capitalism. There's no difference between these two. You know, whatever so let, the, me, let me point out the problem from another perspective. Let's assume for the moment, you know, hypothetically, that the Baha'i writers are willing to, you know, they are willing to write for free. Yep. That they don't have to worry about how to pay their rent or pay well, for. Do their... we know this? Do we do we know? Do you see that this stage? Do you, do you even do, can you even imagine this stage or not? You know. Well, I, I, I cannot imagine this stage. I believe that most of those individuals from the Baha'i Internet Agency on Wikipedia since 2005 have been paid operatives. These people have been paid um, because some of these individuals were, used to be on Wikipedia 24/7 at some of the most ungodly hours all the time oh i see and you can you can track all of this you know unless you know there are sock puppets that means that that uh you know multiple p people were either using the same account or because your statement mr has a exactly a stance opposed to what amy used to tell that this very free ethos from wikipedia leads to all kinds of problems there, it's, but it's not. A, we, but th this is what I'm saying. This is a misunderstanding of the nature of Wikipedia. That's only you're only looking at the facade, um, and then because of the problems you attributed uh, to the free ethos, Wikipedia is not a free ethos. It never has been. Wikipedia has been a, a dominated and, and manipulated ethos from its very inception. And a lot of people came to this conclusion um, almost very early on, within the first year after Wikipedia went up. Um, and there has so been... You, so you, you, you believe that the, that the contributors are kind of, uh, you know, dwindling uh, on uh, some sort of an AMCAS, you know, with as, one... One, one sort of what? Uh, I'm saying, you know, that they are dwindling on, 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 you know, shall we say, an AMCAS, a situation in which no progress is possible, especially because of disagreements, a deadlock, is that you know the current situation going on? Yeah, in the, in the English language Wikipedia, especially. I mean, some of the other language uh, Wikipedia is less so. Um, but you also notice the same problems um, in the Persian language Wikipedia. I've noticed the same sorts of problems, not as acutely in the Arabic language Wikipedia. Um, I'm told that in the you know in um, in some of like the Russian language, it's the same. Um, you notice it also in the German language Wikipedia and the French language in, in Wikipedia. The, this ethos that Wikipedia has created um, over the manipulation of knowledge, um, as like a virus, it, is, it has gone everywhere. But every with see, this is the thing: they pretend to be democratic, they pretend to have democratized knowledge, but in fact, they're doing the very opposite of what they claim. So you think you think that the, you think that do uh, the advantage of being you know able to get a lot of information free also uh, outweigh the disadvantages raised up? Yes. You know. And you know why that is? On how important it is to you that information can be accurate. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sure. And there's a reason for this. And more than one particular commentator has said this before. Like Facebook, like even YouTube. 
um, and obviously Google itself. Wikipedia is part of a project belonging to the Anglo-American military industrial surveillance academic complex. Right? Right. It is the it is the most efficient way to spread misinformation, disinformation. It is a very efficient way, cost effective way uh, to rally uh, for political causes. You know, I've read about this. I, I didn't observe it at the time myself, but I've read about this that during the period of the Arab Spring, that many of the entries related to figures uh, or institutions related to you know to to the Arab Spring, whether it was the government of Egypt under Mubarak or. Uh, ben Ali's regime in Tunisia, or, you know, a lot of different places, that there was a systematic manipulation going on, and these articles were being spun almost to say the same kind of things that CNN or M MSNBC, a lot of the Western corporate media was saying at the time. And now it's gotten even worse because, uh, you know, Russia Today and the whole Russia, uh, the Russian... Um, uh, media alt media ecology, which is equally problematic as as the Western I, corporate media, they're yeah. doing the same thing. They're, they've now also inserted themselves into this fray. So you know, information is basically real information, real knowledge here has become a victim. As such, that's that's right. Because uh, Mr. Ezel, I see another problem in between. An important part of information literacy, you know, and keeping information organized is to know what is true and what is not. Yes. You know, and yeah. to know something about the weight of evidence supporting claims. Yeah, that's you know, that's right. although, yeah. although it is important to be respectful of other opinions, you know, after all, this is the way we can learn new things. We agree. It is also important, equally important, to acknowledge that not all points of view are necessarily equally valid. For That's instance, right. yep. some really do come from a true scholarship and expertise. Some can believe wholeheartedly that Baha'u'llah is God per se, hmm. but that doesn't make it true. That's right. So. Uh, this is this is this is my biggest objection, you know, on the Wikipedia project, because the world has changed for school-age children. You know, just 15 years ago, if you wanted to learn a new fact, it took some time. You That's know, right. say for example, you wanted to know the range of your favorite bird, for instance. That's right. Uh, That's the scarlet uh, teenager or the value of you know Planck's constant in That's the right. old printer day. Either you had to find someone who knew, or you had to find it yourself in That's a right. book, you know. That's right. True. The entire process could take literally hours at the moment. Now these two searches, you know, take less than a second. But that's but what the acquisition of but, information takes place at a great cost, at the great expense of others. Yeah, but, you know? but here's the thing, you know... Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but especially since I, I started noticing from 2009 that more and more information was beginning to, to be disappeared off the Internet um, to the point that the main search engines such as Google and, and Yahoo and, and uh, some of the other ones and Bing no longer bring up a multiplicity and variety of information at all. Um, so these search engines are rigging. The whole system, the main ones. Uh, there are better ones. I mean, DuckDuckGo is slightly better, you know, but there are there are also better search engines than any of these. Um, one thing, there is a silver lining here, but this silver lining, in my opinion, was 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 there was a concern, so it began to be manipulated, and that is that there's a generation emerging now that are far are becoming far more critical and skeptically oriented towards any and all form of information. Okay. Um, the alt media culture, which is dominated by the Russians, you know, basically pounced on that and began to control that 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 entire dynamic. Um, now that's also that's also changing. A lot of people um, have reached that point, realizing that the Russians are not, um, you know, the the Russian um, narrative is not completely kosher either. Um, and so this is a good thing, and I think this is a good. We needed it was a necessary dialectic to happen. Um, between the the falsity of of the Western corporate control of information versus that of uh, that we're seeing 
uh, with the alt media ecology controlled by the Russians. So people are now more critical. They're looking at a variety of sources. Um, they're they're developing the ability. Not everybody, but the people that I talk to, they're uh, developing the ability of bouncing various sources off of each other um, and forming their own opinion about certain issues, which was almost impossible. Even I would say, uh, up to the you know the end of 2016 when the social media especially and pretty much the internet was so polarized over this American election that was internationalized deliberately um, where one camp was pushing their candidate and the other camp was pushing their candidate and then the troll wars that were happening um, as a result of this and the, way, the manner in which uh, all of this was manipulated for one end against the other um, this was in essence uh, the, the, the point at which information and knowledge on the internet was manipulated to the breaking point. And once we, that knowledge broke, once the information broke, it left a core group of people to begin the arduous process over the next, however long it takes, decade, maybe less, um, to develop themselves in a modality wherein uh, we will have much more independent oriented people um, and much more in independent oriented knowledge production happening. Uh, and I don't see the Academy and I don't see the Ivor T Tower as being at the forefront of this at all. In fact, I would say... If I, got, if, if I, got, if I got you correctly, uh, I believe the immediate access to information that Wikipedia, Google, Bing, you know, Alta Vista and other internet tools provide has created mm, a new problem that few of us are trained to solve, and this has to be your collective vision in training the next generation of citizens, you know? Yeah. This has to be what teach your children, how to evaluate the hordes of information that are out there to discern... And that, that, will, require, true, and that will require, I would think, um, more novel approaches to the question of pedagogy. Um, I am very impressed um, and as you've heard me talk before by Paulo Freire's work, but also especially impressed by the kind of work coming from some of his disciples, whether in Portuguese or English. Um, these people are beginning to get it. They have critiqued most of the models of education that we've known um, up, up to the present time. And they are developing uh, novel methodologies of approaching not just the education of children, um, but also the ed education of adults. Um, you know, because because we have to know how to be critical, independent thinkers, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, again, back to the Baha'ism, one of the ongoing uh, challenges that experts ex spend a great deal of their time doing is figuring out simply which sources of information are credible and which are not. And figuring yeah. out what they know versus what they do not know, yeah. you know? For instance, the entry of the Baha'i faith, uh, you know, simply relies 90-90% upon two sources, you know, uh, a book by Mojan Momen <laughs> and another one by Peter Smith. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> How would you say about that? <laughs> Both of whom I consider to be um, partisan, highly biased, um, and ex extremely unscrupulous scholars. Uh, forget about human persons. Um, what do I say about that? I mean, that's that. This is the problem. This is the the narrowness of sources and so the why, why, control why, why, of information. Why did they procrastinate? Why did they procrastinate? It's, I don't think it is about procrastination. I think this is simply about um, knowledge control. This is not procrastination. Because the information is out there. The sourcing is out there already. Um, it, it, they're, not, they're not interested in, 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 in expanding the knowledge. They're in, interested in about controlling the knowledge. Exactly. For instance, in, in, in the very entry of the Baha'i faith, you can't find uh, anything important when it comes to uh, the criticism of the Baha'ism. Yeah. Why? Not Why? Because it's, it's a, again, it stands opposed to the Baha to the Wikipedia policies. 
What is what is that? Well, what they that they th they generated they, they they actually generated a quite a weak article on criticisms of the Baha'i faith, um, but separate from the main article in the Baha'i faith, which basically tells you that the Baha'i faith article on Wikipedia is a piece of propaganda, um, and that it's worthless essentially because if you're dealing with with a scholarly enterprise over the existence of a movement, unless you also um, put in the falsifiability, which is what the criticism of the Baha'i faith essentially is, you're negating your self-acclaimed scientific methodology. And this is what um, Wikipedia has consistently done, where with religious groups, movements, organizations, even corporations, um, they have systematically excluded criticisms that exist about these movements and, and, and ideas and what have you from the main article. That's true. Let me yeah. give you, let me give you, let me give you, uh, uh, you know, a more precise example. Uh, you know, uh, according to Shoghi Effendi, the yeah. harmony between science and religion is an important Baha'i principle, right? Yeah. Yeah. However, there is tension, uh, you know, over this principle due to several instances of Baha'i scriptures disagreeing with current, you know, scientific knowledge, and as Yuan Ko, uh, you know, uh, correctly pointed out, Peter Han, you know, himself a PhD in electrical engineering, grew, you know, a great love in animosity towards sciences, you know. Uh, that's a problem, isn't it? You well, know, I, mean, I don't have a problem with people who have a, who have a valid criticisms at, at the narrowness of the scientific methodology. I mean, I have problems with it myself. I think it's very, you know, the, the methodologies in our, in our grasp at the moment, um, you know, cannot explain some very basic things. Nevertheless, within a, you know, a linguistic or within a narratival context and trajectory, these methodologies work. Now, we, we, we can go beyond them. That's great. Um, but to negate them in the way that the Baha'is talk about it is because... These these Baha'is are operating on a um, they're you know they're they're operating from another they're operating in a context that is by definition antagonistic uh, to to you know to the scientific enterprise Western or Eastern it doesn't there is no borders to the scientific methodology in fact uh, you know m m a lot of these methodologies actually originate in the East they're not uh, sui generis made in the West. And the reason for this is that when you employ scientific methodologies in the, in the, the historical criticism of, of Baha'ism, whether textually or narratively, um, you always end up disproving the, the, the main line, the, ma the main party line. And they don't like this, right? Because um, what they believe is that the, the, you know, the contents of their faith are being challenged, which is fair enough. But nevertheless... The, you know, when these people react in the way they do, um, you're dealing with fundamentalists. And in the, in the context of, of Baha'ism, you know, I don't believe it's a religion, it's a cult. So you're dealing with, with cultism. You're dealing with a narrow-minded mentality that is incapable of dealing with valid criticism on its own level without becoming violent. Um, or, you know, whether violent physically or violent, you know, intellectually. And the classic example of this is in the manner in which uh, John Hatcher and uh, I believe it was Muhammad Afnan attacked Dennis McEwen uh, back in the early 1980s uh, over um, one of his articles, which you know has historiographical problems. His his article, the Bobby Concept of Holy War, um, was became such a target of their criticism um, and really below the belt criticism of, of both the author and the content of the article that it forced uh, Dennis McEwen then to pen uh, a series of, first of all, a, he had a series of back and forths between these two, but then he ended up um, penning two very interesting articles, uh, the, you know, Baha'i uh, Fundamentalism, the Western Academic Study of, uh, of the Bobby Movement, um, you know, and there was another one uh, that, he, that he penned. And th these articles for their time uh, were quite a trenchant, um, critique of this cultist, fundamentalist, uh, close-minded uh, approach to the Baha'is have always employed, no matter what, uh, to these particular questions and to the study of their own history and text. 
Um, because let's face it, and, and look, when these people get, get, get so sensitive to this sort of criticism, it's very telling in that it points to the fact um, that uh, the Baha'i ideology uh, is a glass house. And that once valid criticism is employed against it, um, you, know, you, you know, this glass cracks. And, um, you know, even though you have the same sort of phenomenon amongst Muslims, amongst Jews, etc., but they are able to handle these sorts of criticisms far better um, than the Baha'is ever have. And that is because behind them, there are centuries of scholarship, there are sem centuries of engagement precisely with these sorts of methodologies, and they've refined them and, and, and what have you, whereas the Baha'is are, are, are very much new to the game. Um, and right. and, the, and right. also because the, the, you know, the foundations of Baha'ism, as far as you know, I'm concerned, are illegitimate to begin with. You know. Thank you. Uh, okay, yeah. Mr. Azam, thank you very much, you know, uh, for your, as always, insightful comments. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be continuing, you know, this discussion, uh, you know, in the next podcast. Uh, again, uh, I appreciate. Uh, 